In a famous song, Weird Al Yankovic pokes fun at the espresso crowd, stating, no X in espresso. We're sorry to break it to you, Al, but there is an X in espresso. At least there should be. The term espresso derives from the Italian caffè espresso, but its linguistic origins go back much further to the Latin verb exprimo, which means to press out or to extract. In its past participle form, expressus, this word evolved into espresso in other languages, aligning naturally with its Latin roots. By historical and linguistic standards, espresso with an X fits. In fact, it's the more accurate form when tracing the lineage of this word from the ancient Romans to our modern vocabulary. However, espresso became the dominant form due to Italian localization. Italians adapted foreign terms to fit their language, which is a natural linguistic process. But they've also resisted the reverse, non-Italian speakers modifying the word to fit their own linguistic norms. This has led to the widespread belief that espresso is the correct term, while espresso is mocked, despite being closer to the original Latin. This tension reveals a broader issue of cultural influence over language. Words like espresso have been sidelined not because of linguistic integrity, but because of external social pressures that force conformity to specific cultural standards. In this case, the Italian preference for espresso has overridden the natural evolution that could have occurred if espresso had been allowed to thrive. The idea that espresso means pressed coffee is itself a localization of a broader concept. Pressing, extracting, it's an ancient practice, long predating the espresso machines of modern Italy. The word expressus was used in Latin for both literal pressing and metaphorically to express an idea or feeling. The Italians localized it, but that doesn't mean other cultures can't adopt and adapt the term in ways that align with their own linguistic rules. This often happens in Italy and all over the world. The Merriam-Webster dictionary suggests another possible origin, arguing that espresso could mean express coffee, implying something made quickly, on the fly. But here again, espresso fits that meaning just as well, if not better, given its closer alignment with Latin's expressus, meaning expressed or pressed out. The insistence on using espresso without deviation is a form of linguistic gatekeeping, one that disregards the natural flow of language adaptation. Historically, words change as they travel from culture to culture. English, in particular, has thrived on absorbing and localizing foreign terms. Yet in this case, the Italian version was socially enforced, with espresso relegated to the realm of mockery. What's especially ironic is that other Latin-based words have evolved more naturally in English. We have express, expression, expressive, all derived from the same Latin root, exprimere. And yet, when it comes to our coffee, we resist espresso. The Italians certainly don't hesitate to adapt foreign words. Consider how exprimere became esprimere, and expressive became espressivo in Italian. But when non-Italians adopt and modify espresso, suddenly the rules change. This linguistic double standard doesn't just highlight an inconsistency in how we handle borrowed words, it stifles the organic evolution of language. We've seen espresso lose ground not because of linguistic clarity, but due to external social pressures that prioritize conformity over adaptation. The debate over espresso and espresso may seem trivial, but it reflects a larger issue of how we allow or resist language to evolve. Instead of allowing linguistic adaptation, we've been socially conditioned to adhere to a localized version of a word, even when the alternative is more faithful to the word's origins. Ultimately, the dominance of espresso over espresso isn't a victory of linguistic purity. It's a case of cultural influence shaping our language in ways that limit its natural flexibility. If we look to the future of language, let this debate serve as a reminder. Words evolve, cultures blend, and our language should reflect the dynamic, adaptive nature of human expression, not just conformity to inherited norms. That's all for today. Remember that one should not express the anal glands of a dog if one does not know what they are properly doing.